Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I wanted to film a video today about my favorite picture books that have been published in the year 2019 and board books, board books too. So I kind of wanted to show you the covers, maybe show you a few of the pages and kind of tell you the general idea of each picture book. There's a lot of them here and I, I kind of had to stop myself because there've been, there's been so many good ones published this year. And there's a lot of topics covered here which I'm interested in, including social justice and gender, climate change, lots of things like that, but there's also like some really, really funny and creative picture books as well. So let's get into them. So first I wanted to go through kind of my more weighty topics pile. It just has a moral message or has a more intense topic to talk about. First one I wanted to show you is called Accept when they don't. As you can see from the picture and the kind of colors, this one is about gender. Boys play monster trucks with glee, girls bake cakes and serve hot tea, girls like pom-poms, pink and jewels, boys like fighting pirate duels, and all of the things that boys like to do and girls like to do stereotypically, and then it turns the page and says, except when they don't. It kind of shows you that doing one or the other doesn't make you one gender or the other. The next one I wanted to show you is called Sea Bear. A Journey for Survival by Lindsay Moore. This is a really heartbreaking one. It makes you think about what it's like to be a polar bear. A polar bear can outweigh almost anything, seal, storms, and long sunless winters, but a bear at sea needs something to stand on. I watch the ice. The ice is going away because of climate change, and at the end it tells you about their plight for survival as well. And the end says, we know how to hope and how to wait. Another one I wanted to mention is called Lubna and Pebble. Here's how it starts. And it basically talks about how Lubna's best friend is a pebble. She's actually a refugee, kind of awaiting um, the possibility of moving from the camp that they're in. A little boy coming by and the little boy makes friends with Lubna and then they realize that Lubna and her family is leaving. They have found a new home, basically tearing these new friends apart. So of course Lubna decides to leave her pebble for the next boy who's in this world of tents to have the pebble as something to comfort everybody that's coming into this refugee camp. Another beautiful one. There's a lot of heavy topics here. It's called The Proudest Blue. The person who this book is about, which you can see right there, is the fencer that went to the Olympics and she was the first Muslim American woman in hijab to compete for the US in the Olympic Games. So this is a story from her real life about her and her sister going to school, the tradition of her now starting to wear a hijab to go to school, and then her little sister seeing how her bigger sister is being teased for all of this, and then the mom and the sister kind of explaining that this is a beautiful tradition to them um, and it's not anything to, you know, feel humiliated by. So here's kind of what the art looks like. It's a great story about sisterhood and sisters standing up for each other. This first hijab that is blue signifies for them. Let's talk about books that made me cry. First one is called The Undefeated by Kwame Alexander and Kadir Nelson. You can see straight from the cover that this is about black history and it starts like this. This is for the unforgettable, the swift and sweet ones who hurdled history and opened a world of possible. And it goes through different parts of black history. The art is just beautiful. Like it literally looks like a photograph almost. I'll show you my favorite pages. The righteous marching ones who sang, we shall not be moved because black lives matter. This is for the unspeakable. And this page which hits you right in the gut. This is for the unspeakable, and this is for the unspeakable. And it shows you Sandra Bland, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice. Fantastic page that I love is this page with them smiling. This is for the undefeated, this is for you, and you, and you, this is for us. What a beautiful illustration! And this is a Kwame Alexander poem that he wrote in 2008, is what it said, after Barack Obama was elected. And then, if you really, really want to cry, I literally cried at work reading this book called The President Saying Amazing Grace, a book about finding grace after unspeakable tragedy. And it's from a short film of a song performed by Joan Baez. It starts like this. A young man came to a house of prayer. They did not ask what brought him there. He was not a friend, he was not kin, but they opened the door and let him in. And for an hour, the stranger stayed. He sat with them and seemed to pray. Then the young man drew a gun and killed nine people, old and young. In Charleston, in the month of June, the mourners gathered in a room. The president came to speak some words and the cameras rolled and the nation heard. 
but no words could say what must be said for all the living and the dead. So on that day and in that place, the president sang Amazing Grace, but no words could say what must be said for all the living and all the dead. Let's look at more lighthearted things after I broke your heart. One of them is called Bloom Boom. I love how ginormous it is and how like in-depth the pictures are. It's got beautiful vocabulary as well. Bulbs send tips extend bloom boom another beautiful book that also was made using flowers it's called abc this is by flora forager in the back the artist talks about how she came up with this and like what she used but every letter she uses flower parts to do different animals so here's a blue footed booby and a camel beautiful flowers the unicorn one Another beautiful book I loved is called Found, and it's a story of a little boy, and he finds a little dog, so he rescues the dog. He's with him all the time. He leaves the little dog when he goes to the pet store. He sees this notice, Roscoe is lost, and so he lays in bed. His little rescue dog is actually somebody else's dog. It was another little boy's dog, and he gets returned, and then he meets another little dog that's so sad at the humane shelter, and that's the last picture. A book that I loved, I mean I loved all of these, is called One Fox by Kate Reed. This is a counting book thriller. One famished fox, two sly eyes, three plump hens, oh no hens, four padding paws, five snug eggs, six silent steps, seven knocks at the door, tap 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 tap, eight beady eyes. <laughs> Nine flying feathers, ten sharp teeth, ah, 100 angry hens, so then they all come to the rescue, and one frightened fox. No hens or foxes were harmed in the making of this. The end. Another one that works for story time is called Bear Needs Help. Um, this one's got very little dialogue, very little words. It says, oh no, and it's a little bear, and his shoelace, if you can tell, is untied. So he asks, excuse me, to these seals, pardon me, to these bunnies, could any of you help me? Oh dear. And then the birds come and say, shoelaces again? Yep. So there go the pigeons, untying the other shoelaces. And then he says, thank you, jumps in the water. And then they say, he really needs to learn to do that himself. Another bear comes and says, excuse me. That's the end. Another clothes themed one is called One Red Sock. This one is also a concepts one. This one is uh, colors. It's a really cute little hippo that's sitting and she's wearing this red sock. She's missing a sock and so it always keeps rhyming. So she puts on a blue sock. This won't ruin my day. So she put on another sock. This one was gray and it's a really fun one to do at story time to leave the rhyme out and to basically ask your audience to say it out loud for you. And then the best part, she tottered off happy though her socks weren't a pair and the other red sock, it had always been there. So I was sitting in the chair she was sitting in, just hiding behind her. A silly one that I've recommended plenty this year for anybody starting potty training is called Poop or Get Off the Potty. And it's got really fun illustrations, like look at that hair. And then I'll show you my favorite part. Uh-oh, a poop is coming, says Mia. Uh-oh, a poop is coming, says Mason. And they look serious. And Mason turns red. This is TMI. They need something realistic. And then another one that's been really awesome this year that I've done at story time is called Piranhas Don't Eat Bananas. And you have to say it like that because um, Aaron Blaby is Australian. And his series Pick the Pug, which are the ones back here, and Thelma the Unicorn have been really popular at our branch. And it's basically this piranha named Brian who keeps wanting to eat bananas. His friends just keep saying, we don't eat those things. We don't eat anything healthy like that. We eat knees, we eat bodies. And they say, we eat bums. And this is the part that gets everyone laughing at story time. And so they try fruit finally. And they say, so what do you think guys? Is it yucky or yum? And they say, it's very nice, Brian. But we still prefer bum. And now let's go through board books really quick. I only brought like five. And these are just some that I've been really liking lately. One is called Dinosaurs. Sandra Boynton has a new one out. It's basically all these dinosaurs who are getting ready for sleep. This is where all the snoring begins is what it says. Here's their snoring. Another one that I have never seen this author before is called Jump. 
and it's fun because it goes this way instead of this way and it basically goes through different animals and things that jump and then they always go boing dog goes boing grasshopper boing a snail jumps um maybe not i love this one too the illustrations are so beautiful it's called jungle see how beautiful those colors are they're perfect for baby story time and so it goes through what each is called baby tigers are called and it lifts called cubs i didn't know about this one did you a daddy peafowl is called a peacock a mommy peafowl is called a peahen why are we always calling peacocks baby peafowl are called pea chicks the best part is when you, if you get to this part and you open it up like this and you see what the groups are called. So a memory of the elephants, an embarrassment of pandas, pride of peafowl, and an ambush of tigers. And then my favorite board book of the year is called Humpty Dumpty by Hazel Quintanilla. And it's really funny because it takes the old school nursery rhyme of Humpty Dumpty. There's a whole series of these, but this one I think is the most clever one that they did with this nursery rhyme. Here's Humpty Dumpty, he's a crab in this one. Had a great fall on the king's horses. Seahorse. Couldn't put Humpty together again, so he's permanently broken. <laughs> Look at that face. I just thought it was really clever and silly. That was a lot of books. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you have any little ones in your life, maybe this can provide you with some ideas of picture books to get them. If you liked any of these, let me know in the comments like which one was your favorite one, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.